Ever since the PlayStation 5 launched back in November 2020, gamers have been asking about the SSD internal expansion and when it's going to drop. Well, Seagate made an important M.2 drive announcement that might affect that rollout, plus the standalone follow-up expansion to Ghost of Tsushima got a major confirmation this morning, and the PlayStation Plus games for July have supposedly leaked. All this and much, much more in today's edition of the Salty's PlayStation News Report. Let's get into it. What's up, PlayStation Nation? Happy Monday. In today's first news story, we're going to talk about Seagate and how they're announcing an M.2 drive that transfers faster than the PlayStation 5's SSD at SG21. The reason why this is important is because the PlayStation 5 has a really, really advanced SSD in it. The reason why they did this is because they wanted to future-proof the tech. Mark Cerny designed the PlayStation 5 around a super advanced SSD. SSD because that's what developers wanted the most. It unlocks the ability to create games that they have not been able to create before. Just look at Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. You listen to the developers over there at Insomniac Games and they say that they've only scratched the surface when it comes to taking advantage of the SSD and what it can do for game development. In terms of external SSD support, Mark Cerny did a deep dive on the PlayStation 5 before launch and he had some interesting things to say about the PlayStation 5 and SSD expansion. I'm going to play those for you and then we'll go over what he had to say. If your purpose in adding more storage is to play PlayStation 5 titles though, ideally you would add to your SSD storage. We will be supporting certain M2 SSDs. These are internal drives that you can get on the open market and install in a bay in the PlayStation 5. As for which ones we support and when, I'll get to that in a moment. They connect through the custom I.O. unit, just like our SSD does. So they can take full advantage of the decompression, I.O. coprocessors, and all the other features I was talking about. Here's the catch, though. That commercial drive has to be at least as fast as ours. Games that rely on the speed of our SSD need to work flawlessly with any M2 drive. When I gave the Wired interview last year, I said that the PlayStation 5 SSD was faster than anything available on PC. At the time, commercial M2 drives used PCIe 3.0, and four lanes of that cap out at 3.5 gigabytes a second. In other words, no PCIe 3.0 drive can hit the required spec. M2 drives with PCIe 4.0 are now out in the market. We're getting our in uh, samples and seeing mm, 4 or 5 gigabytes a second from them. By year's end, I expect there will be drives that saturate 4.0 and support 7 gigabytes a second. Having said that, we are comparing apples and oranges though, because that commercial M2 drive will have its own architecture, its own flash controller, and so on. For example, the NVMe specification lays out a priority scheme for requests that the M2 drives can use. And that scheme is pretty nice, but it only has two true priority levels. Our drives support six. We can hook up a drive with only two priority levels, definitely, but our custom I.O. unit has to arbitrate the extra priorities rather than the M2 drive's flash controller. And so the M2 drive needs a little extra speed to take care of issues arising from the different approach. That commercial drive also needs to physically fit inside of the bay we created in PlayStation 5 for M2 drives. Unlike internal hard drives, there's unfortunately no standard for the height of an M2 drive. And some M2 drives have giant heat sinks. In fact, some of them even have their own fans. Right now, we're getting M2 drive samples and benchmarking them in various ways. When games hit beta as they get ready for the PlayStation 5 launch at year end, we'll also be doing some compatibility testing to make sure that the architecture of particular M2 drives isn't too foreign for the games to handle. Once we've done that compatibility testing, we should be able to start letting you know which drives will physically fit and which drive samples have benchmarked appropriately high in our testing. It would be great if that happened by launch, but it's likely to be a, a bit past it. So please hold off on getting that M2 drive until you hear from us. Basically, what Mark Cerny was talking about is they're waiting for compatibility testing and benchmarks for the M.2 drives that were going to be coming out. And one of the issues here is that the PlayStation 5 has such an advanced SSD that the current SSDs on the market, even at that time, just weren't up to par. And the ones that were were extremely expensive at a glance. 
glance, the PlayStation 5 SSD is able to do 5.5 gigabytes of raw or eight to nine gigabytes of compressed data per second. That's about a hundred times faster than what's possible on the PlayStation 4. The IO throughput of the PlayStation 5's SSD is 50 to 100 megabytes per second, which is dependent on data location on the HDD. This is what John Linneman had to say back when they revealed the PlayStation 5. The craziest thing about the PlayStation 5 is the speed of the SSD. 5.5 gigabytes per second is just part of the story. There's a lot of custom silicon in there to ensure that the system isn't bottlenecked in other areas. It's really fast on paper, a lot faster than the Xbox Series X even. When you compare the two, the PlayStation 5 is over double the speed of the Xbox Series X's SSD. Now, when we get to the announcement of this new M.2 drive that transfers faster than the PlayStation 5's SSD, it's the Fire CUDA 530 series PC IE Gen 4 SSD. So I'm gonna pull up a chart here and let you see all the ins and outs of the SSD. But the long and short of it, it's about 25% faster. The speed eclipses the PlayStation 5's 5.5 gigabytes per second by 25%, like I said. So on paper, it's faster, but However, it might not be the case because the PlayStation 5's SSD is custom built and the custom controller on the PlayStation 5 is able to compress the data. So in fact, it could be potentially processing the data eight to nine gigabytes of compressed data in the same time. One of the things that's gonna make your eyes pop out of your head is the price of this SSD. It's $490 US for a four terabyte, which is pretty much the same price of a console itself, which retails at 499 for the disc version. So this is pretty ridiculous ridiculous, right? No one in their right mind is going to go out and buy two terabytes of the fastest SSD on the market for 500 bucks when you can get a console for the same price. It's definitely an issue. I'm not going to lie. Having the state of the art tech comes with cost. It's extremely pricey to get this advanced SSD technology. Now, in terms of a compatible SSD, there was another CUDA Fire CUDA stick that came out a little bit ago that's way less expensive than this one. And you're probably looking at like a terabyte of expansion. And if you look at like comparison, the Xbox proprietary SSD that you can pick up on the market is like 230 or something like that. But there's only one option for that SSD. And again, the tech behind that is a lot less advanced. So it should be interesting to see what kind of options gamers have and if they, you know, opt to get those or just go with the standard hard drives and kind of transfer files back and forth. I myself just kind of go with fast internet. I delete stuff I don't want. If I want to download another game, I have Gigablast internet. So it's extremely fast. I can actually almost keep up with transfer rates with SSDs. But anyway, I want to know what you guys think. New SSD on the market, the Seagate Fire CUDA 530, 500 bucks for a two terabyte by would you be doing this kind of stuff? I doubt it. Let's talk about it in the comment section. In other news, Ghost of Tsushima is rumored to get a standalone expansion. I did a video on this and I talked about how good it would be, how cool it'd be, because this is one of my favorite games from last generation. But at the time, it was just a rumor for some leaks. But we're getting some pretty concrete information that's pointing towards this rumor being actually factual. While nothing has been official, nothing from Sony at least, there is some pretty concrete evidence that this is going to to happen. A domain for Ghost of Ikishima, the rumored standalone expansion, has been registered online. And while nothing official has been confirmed by Sony themselves, when you try to go to this domain, you're redirected to the official PlayStation website. Redirects can be done by anyone, but Ghost of Tsushima.com redirects to the PlayStation game page for the title. Sony is supposed to be hosting a pre E3 event sometime in July, where it's rumored that we will be getting a bunch of key reveals, including this game. So I want to ask you guys again, are you guys excited for this? If it was like 40 bucks, just like Miles Morales, it was kind of along the same length as that or the Uncharted Lost Legacy. Would you guys be excited for it? Let's talk about it. And in the last bit of news, the PlayStation Plus games for the month of July have been rumored to be leaked. Now, before I tell you the games that were leaked, I got to give you this caveat. Like I always do, you need to take these rumors with a grain of salt. The German website, My Deals, which was quickly spotted by Reddit users, leaked July selections, but there's some debate whether or not these are legit or not. So I just want you guys to take in that into account. One of the games that was listed is a Plague's Tale Innocence, and I'm almost 100% sure that this game is going to be a part of the PlayStation Plus games for July because this game has been rumored by multiple outlets for a long time, even before E3 happened. And this game's getting a PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X update, and it's supposed to release on July 6th, which 
just happens to be the same day that July's PlayStation Plus games will drop. I played Plague's Tale Innocence on Xbox One X, and it was actually a pretty good game. It was kind of slow in some areas, but overall the story was good. The combat was fun. I'm not sure if I would play through it again on the PlayStation 5, maybe just to pick up a Platinum. I'm not sure. But in terms of the other games that are rumored to be included in the lineup, in, in addition to a Plague's Tale, would be WRC 9 and Uncharted The Lost Legacy. Now, in terms of these games, I'm kind of skeptical that these two will be the actual games. And unfortunately, I have a little bit of bad luck when it comes to one of these titles because I just bought Uncharted The Last Legacy not long ago because I've been trying to play through all the Uncharted games. I played through one and two. I still need to finish three. I played and beat four, and then I was going to play Lost Legacy. So I did buy Lost Legacy. So if it's free, it kind of sucks because you want to get games you don't have. But I've heard amazing things about Lost Legacy in terms of WRC 9. Not really my type of game, but again, I'm kind of skeptical whether or not those two are going to be included. I think Plague's Tale Innocence is almost for sure going to be in the in the PlayStation Plus games. But what else is going to be in there? You know, your guess is as good as mine. What do you guys think of all these games? Do you like them? Would you like to see all three of them as the PlayStation Plus games for July? Let's talk about it. But that's it for today's edition of the Saltiest PlayStation News Report. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it. If you're new, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can stay up to date with all things PlayStation and PlayStation 5. Have a great day. Have fun gaming. And as always, stay salty, my friends.